good evening and namaste everyone i welcome you all to the inauguration ceremony of national children science congress 2020 organized by science india forum kingdom of saudi arabia at the outset i'd like to heartily welcome you all for joining and honoring this august gathering to begin the day's proceedings may I welcome our national children science congress national coordinator to deliver the welcome address this gentleman is the president of science india forum riyadh chapter professionally he holds a doctorate in chemistry from the institute of chemical technology mumbai and has over 30 years of global experience in research and development, quality assurance, customer care, remote management, and environment management in the field of surfactants, home care products, and personal care products. Currently, he works as a lead scientist in Saudi Basic Industries Corporation, and he is involved in promoting science-related activities for children through Science India Forum, including the National Children's Science Congress. He holds the credit for initiating and leading from the front for the first ever National Children's Science Congress conducted in Saudi Arabia in the year 2019. He strongly feels that we are born to serve others. Please put your hands together to welcome Dr. K.C. Narayan. Dr. K.C. Narayan, the screen is yours. Thank you very much, uh, host Dr. Sundar. Respected Deputy Chief of Mission, Ram Prasadji, Chairman of National Academic Committee, Dr. Lalit Sharmaji, Ex-Chairman of National Academic Committee, Raghunathji, School Principals, Teachers, Parents, Students, Science in the Forum Officials, and all others. I welcome you all to the National Children's Science Congress 2020. As you know, last year we organized the first National Children's Science Congress in Saudi Arabia, and this is the second year. In India, this is the 28th Congress. When I joined Science India Forum in July last year, the topmost priority was to introduce National Children's Science Congress in Saudi Arabia. We successfully organized the first NCSC with the participation of 30 teams and was very well appreciated by the schools. For me, the biggest moment was the participation at the national level Trivandrum along with the children and teachers. It was really a memorable experience. The children and teachers relished every moment of the five days program. I was very fortunate to have interaction with eminent personalities like Dr. Sujit Banerjee, Dr. Lalit Sharmaji, Raghunathji, etc. at Trivandrum. The support we get from them is incredible. As we often say, in every adversity, there is a opportunity. The COVID-19 pandemic was a blessing in disguise for us. When many others felt it's a setback, we felt it's an opportunity. That's because this year, we could give orientation to the children and to teachers multiple number of times, since it could be done sitting at home. Several times, I could interact with the children and guides to clarify all their doubts. Moreover, it was convenient to give feedback for improvement. Organizing NCC in the Eastern region of Saudi Arabia was very convenient since I could manage it from Riyadh. This year, 164 teams participated in NCC compared to 30 last year. Moreover, there was an incredible improvement in the quality of projects. I was really impressed to see some quality social innovation projects this year, thanks to Department of Science and Technology for introducing social innovation as one of the sub themes this year. I would like to proudly mention that Saudi Arabia is the only country in the Middle East for conducting NCSE this year. The national level oral presentations have been scheduled for three days starting from today. As communicated earlier, the most promising projects will represent Saudi Arabia at the national level Congress, which is being scheduled as a virtual event in the first week of February. Before concluding my speech, I have a small suggestion to the students and guides. Every child wants to win. However, the experience is more valuable than winning. Therefore, I request you to focus 
more on utilizing the opportunity to develop, to develop innovation skills and learn how to carry out research. After we finish the oral presentation, we will guide the students to publish their projects in some journals. It's an opportunity for children to learn how to publish articles in journals. Winning gives us momentary satisfaction, whereas the experience we gain through NCC process will definitely help us tremendously on a long run. Therefore, do not lose heart if your project is not selected as the most promising project. Try again next year to gain more experience. I take this opportunity to express my gratitude to the GCC coordinator, Abgaji, and Science India Forum for keeping faith in me and bestowing this responsibility on me. I thank Dr. Sujit Banerjee, Dr. Lalit Sharmaji, and Raghunath Ji for their relentless support. Once again, I welcome you all. With that, I return the lectern back to the host. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. K.C. Narayan, for that wonderful words. Next on the screen, we will be having the address by our Science India Forum, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, National President, Sri Biju Mullasheri Gangadharan. Sri Biju Mullasheri is a cloning consultant director of Clone Biotech owned by Al Raji International Group. He has impe impeccable achievements in the field of biotechnology and science. He backed the B.R. Ambedkar Award for Excellence in the Field of Biotechnology in 2016 and received the Best Biotechnologist Award from Science for Education and Scientific Research Organization 2016. He has been the national president of Science India Forum and helming the activities of all Science India Forum chapters in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Please put your hands together to welcome Sri Biju Mulasheri to address the August gathering. Just to open my video, please. You can try opening your video now. Thank you. Good afternoon and warm welcome to all. First of all, I thank everyone for finding time to join the second National Children's Science Congress in KSC organized by National Council of Science and Technology Communications, Department of Science and Technology, Government of India, in association with Science India Forum KSC. Respected Deputy Chief in Mission, of uh, Embassy of India and today's chief guest, Mr. Ramprasad sir, Chairman of National Academy Committee for NCSC, Dr. Lalit Sharma, Ex-Chairman of NCSC, Mr. Raghunath sir, Chief GCC Organization Secretary, Mr. Abhgar Ravindranath Babu, School Principals, Science Coordinators, all the participant students, CIF officials, parents and other dignitaries. Thank you for being with us. Science India Forum is an organization in the Middle East regularly conducting scientific activities in the Gulf region around a decade of time. The main aim of the SAF is to create a scientific temperament among the students and lead them to take up science as a career. SAF is getting supported by the NCRT and Department of Science and Technology, Government of India, and several scientific R&D institutions in India. CIFKSA started functioning in the year 2015, and after five years of successful science campaign, we have now five major chapters in the kingdom, like Riyadh, Dammam, Jubail, Hassa, and Jiddah. In kingdom, we have conducted several science-oriented programs in most of the Indian international schools. In KSA, we have conducted programs like Shastra Pradiva Contest, Research and Development Institutions Visit in India, National Technological Day Celebrations, Teachers Empowerment Day programs, Children's Science Congress, Science Knowledge Fair, online coding courses for children, international yoga day programs, and several webinars with relevance to the science. This is the second time Science India Forum is conducting National Children's Science Congress in KSA with a record participation of 164 teams in junior and senior level from 12 international Indian schools. We got exceptionally very good response from Indian schools in the kingdom. And in this occasion, I would like to thank all school principals for their sincere support to SIF to conduct this event. This year, the quality of the students' project is exceptionally high, as Dr. Narayan Sa say, so within the limits of a virtual platform. I can proudly say that the participant students in CSC has effectively utilized their unfavorable pandemic situation into an opportunity 
to express their scientific temperament and contribute their best to reach the concept of Atmanirbhar Bharat Abhayan mission and mission by our Prime Minister. Let me thank Chairman of uh, National Academy Committee of uh, NCSE, Dr. Lelis Sharma, for granting the permission to SAS to conducting NCSE in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. I appreciate the science coordinators of Eastern and Central region for their sincere effort to guide the students during this period. I must congratulate all the students who won the inter-school level competitions of NCSE and wishing them all the best for the National Children's Science Congress contest. We are deeply humbled by the generosity of His Excellency Dr. Asif Saeed for greeting this event. I must thank Dr. Hon uh, Honorable uh, DCM and Chief Guest Mr. Ramprasad sir for gracing this occasion for the unconditional support uh, by the Indian Embassy to SIF KSA. We are uh, really appreciate you taking out time for, us, for this your busy schedule. I would like to extend my sincere gratitude to the current academic chairman of NCSC, Dr. Lil Sharma, and ex chairman of NCSC, Mr. Degunath, sir, for your valuable presence in this occasion. I acknowledge my gratitude to GCC coordinator, Chief Mr. Abhya Devendra Nadababu, National General Secretary of SIS, Mr. Degashman, NCSC coordinator, Dr. Narend, the MAM chapter president, uh, Mr. Sanil Kumar, Riyadh chapter vice president, Dr. Sundar, and other SIF officials, judging panel members for your cooperation and valuable contribution to NCS. Thank you very much. Over to host. Thank you very much, Mr. Biju, for those excellent words. Next, we are indeed honored and privileged to have this person who is our chief guest today. We want him not only to be with us, but also to inaugurate this great event. Let me welcome our Deputy Chief of Mission, Embassy of India, Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, Sri Ram Prasad to deliver the inaugural address. Sri Ram Prasad is a career diplomat who joined Ministry of External Affairs in 1988. Prior to assuming charge as Deputy Chief of Mission in Riyadh, he has served in various capacities at Indian missions and posts abroad in Mongolia, Ukraine, France, Tunisia, Nepal, Nigeria, and the Philippines. He holds a degree in commerce from Delhi University. It's indeed a privilege to know that he is a multilinguist who speaks Tamil, English, Hindi, Punjabi, Russian, and French. Ram Sazadji, it is indeed our pleasure and privilege, privilege to have you here with us today. The stage is yours for the inaugural address, sir. You may please unmute yourself and speak, sir. Yeah. Um, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, it is indeed a great uh, privilege and uh, pleasure to be here as part of the um, uh, the Ch Children's Science Congress. Uh, um, uh, uh, I would like to uh, uh, say a special hello to uh, Dr. Lalit Sharma, the chairman of the National Academic Committee and of the National Children's Science Congress, uh, Dr. Uh, T.P. Raghunath, uh, the former chairman of the National Academic Committee, National Children's Science Congress, uh, Dr. K.C. Narayan uh, from the SAF, uh, Mr. Biju Mulasari, who is the national president of the uh, SAF in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, and uh, Mr. Sanal Kumar, chapter president of the SAF Damam, uh, all the officials uh, of the um, uh, Science India Forum in the KSA and the other officials and um, the principal students and everybody who's part of the proceedings today on the on this uh, virtual meet. A uh, very uh, good afternoon and a very warm welcome to you all. And um, uh, it gives me great pleasure to be part of the second Children's uh, Science Congress for students of the Indian diaspora in Saudi Arabia. Uh, as you are aware, the National Children's Science Congress is a prestigious event and a flagship program of the National Council for Science and Technology uh, Communication of the Department of Science and Technology, Government of India. Uh, the Science India Forum as an association of scientists and professionals 
based in the Middle East, has contributed immensely in building science talent uh, among Indian students in the region through organizing of various programs and activities over the last 16 years uh, by implementing uh, its mission of building linkages between academy and industry it has contributed in general towards strengthening of the bilateral relationship between the countries in the Middle East and India in the science and technology field. Uh, at the recent inauguration of the India International Science Festival, Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi <coughs> remarked that India's scientific community will share and grow with the best of global talent and that the government is taking steps to make India a trustworthy center for scientific learning and research with its uh, rich legacy in science, technology and innovation. Uh, with this objective, in October this year, the Government of India also hosted the Vaibhav Summit, uh, which brought together scientists and researchers belonging to the Indian diaspora from all over the world with an objective to debate upon collaboration mechanisms to strengthen academic and science and technology base in India for global development. Uh, at the Embassy too, we plan to soon launch an initiative to connect Indian community members belonging to the world of academia to share and discuss their ideas, especially as the field of higher education in the kingdom is opening up. It is well known that creating the right mindset for research and innovation and developing a scientific temper among children is crucial. Therefore, the initiative of the National Children's Science Congress to create a forum for children to showcase their creativity and innovation through developing projects of social relevance is a welcome one. Uh, the program encourages application-based learning and uniquely combines the development of a scientific temper in children while at the same time making them uh, socially aware. Uh, I am very happy to note that the Science India Forum of Saudi Arabia has undertaken the responsibility of shortlisting projects from Indian students in the kingdom for participation in the national event in India by giving an opportunity for the young budding scientists studying in different schools in Saudi Arabia to showcase their potential. We ensure that they play their own small but significant part on uh, national progress despite being away from their motherland. On behalf of His Excellency the Ambassador and all my colleagues at the Embassy of India, I wish all the young participants the very best and also congratulate the Science India Forum for their efforts and wish the event a great success. Jai Hind and thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed, sir. It's our honor and pleasure and privilege for you to be with us here to inaugurate this event. At this juncture, it is indeed my privilege to read out the message uh, sent out from our Honorable Ambassador of Embassy of India, Riyadh, to the Science India Forum National Children's Science Congress Organizing Committee. I'm happy to note, this is in the words, I quote the words of our Honorable Ambassador, Dr. Ausuf Saeed. I'm happy to note that the Science India Forum, Saudi Arabia is organizing the second Children's Science Congress for students of Indian diaspora in Saudi Arabia on 25th and 26th of December, 2020. The National Children's Science Congress is a prestigious event and a flagship program of the National Council for Science and Technology Communication, Department of Science and Technology, Government of India. The primary objective of the National Children's Science Congress is to create a forum for children to showcase their creativity and innovation through developing projects of social relevance. The program encourages application-based learning and uniquely combines the development temper in children while at the same time making them socially aware. It's heartening to know that Science India Forum, Saudi Arabia, has undertaken this important responsibility of shortlisting projects from Indian students in the kingdom for participation in the national event in India. I extend my greetings and best wishes to the Science India Forum for its efforts and wish the event a great success. Dr. Ausaf Saeed, Ambassador, Embassy of India, Riyadh. Thank you very much, sir for honoring us with this wonderful message. Next, we all need to know from our 
scientific geniuses sitting in front of us. Let me welcome Dr. Lalit Sharma ji to address the gathering again. Professionally, Dr. Lalit Sharma is a veterinary consultant with post-graduation in veterinary pharmacology and has experience from research and development to sales and marketing of veterinary pharmaceutical products. He has made presentations on research findings worldwide and has more than 40 publications in veterinary, national and international journals. Dr. Sharma wrote a series of articles for a column on pet care in Navi Mumbai edition of the Times of India. And he has been associated with this profession for nearly four decades. Passionately, Dr. Lalit Sharma wishes to call himself as a science communicator and has been actively promoting science through talks, especially among children. He has been associated with various science popularization programs of the Department of Science and Technology Government of India, including the Children's Science Congress, National Teachers Science Congress in various capacities, and as a resource person, evaluator, and convener of the 20th National Child Children's Science Congress held at Varanasi. He is currently the chairman of National Academic Committee of Children's Science Congress. The Department of Science and Technology has included him as a member of National Experts Advisory Committee looking into evaluation and monitoring of the programs of children's innovative research and outreach. On the social front, Dr. Sharma is active as a managing trustee of Vigyan Setu Foundation, which is an effort to bridge science and society through popularizing and promoting science among the masses. Recently, the Vigyan Setu Foundation launched Zoonosis Ambassador Program 2020 with an objective of grooming future communicators of zoonosis. Last but never the least, Dr. Sharma has also authored a book, Managing the Scientist in Your Child, which highlights nurturing scientific temper among younger generation. It's indeed a privilege to have Dr. Lalit Sharma ji with us today. Sir, we would love to hear from you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And Namaskar to all. Uh, uh, best wishes uh, from uh, India on behalf of Children's Science Congress and uh, especially uh, National Academic Committee. Uh, we wish all the children participating in Children's Science Congress this year uh, from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia all the best. And uh, we wish that uh, we see maximum number of uh, inventions and innovations out of your projects. Because uh, even last year, we had been observing very closely the projects coming from uh, Gulf countries and uh, very specially uh, where the Narayan sir had been, uh, you know, actively involved in the program and uh, for the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, whatever projects we had received, we scrutinized them very closely in, and we found that those are really wonderful projects and have been uh, to the top class, we would say, in terms of uh, scientific uh, endeavor, uh, whatever innovation they have involved and whatever the invention uh, part that was involved in that. The only thing is that uh, we need to now understand that whatever we are doing, what was our idea? What has become into an invention and how it can become an innovation? Now, for more, most of the children who have participated in this program, I think most of these uh, concepts are very clear to them. But beyond that, what? When you, are, you have an idea, you want to apply that idea in the form of an invention, and then you want to improvise on that idea or invention that becomes your innovation. But re please remember, these ideas or innovations and inventions are only worth if it is useful or beneficial for the society. As Narayan sir has mentioned that this year we have a more number of social innovation projects, which clearly indicates that we are on the right path, that our invention and innovations are going to be most beneficial for the society at large. Because as it is, if we talk about the sustainability, the three pillars of sustainability we know is the economics, environment, and society. And society being at the hem of the entire project, we must take care of this. Now, such kind of adversities like uh, this year's pandemic has been a recurring event every century, every millennium we have seen and we have observed. 
I'll just, for the sake of children, I'll just narrate an incident or a small story, uh, which is uh, dated about, uh, say, 1665, about 350 years back. Similar kind of pandemic had affected United Kingdom, and that was the Black Death or the plague. Believe me, today we know that COVID-19 is caused by coronavirus. We know all the strains and uh, multi-strains and everything we know about it. But way back in 1665, no one knew what is causing that Black Death. So much so that it had wiped out almost like one fourth of the population of the country. It was only after 200 years that scientists could trace out that it was Yersinia pestis which caused the uh, plague in United Kingdom. Well, when this uh, adversity affected when this pandemic took place at that point of time also, they had observed what we call social distancing as of now. All the school, colleges, workplaces, everything was shut down just to avoid the spread of the infection among the general population. In Cambridge University of the, uh, the Trinity College, there was a young boy in his 20s who also had to come back home with all his homework. His house was about 60 kilometers from Trinity College. It was in Woolsthorpe Manor. He came and he brought a lot of mathematical calculations to be done at home. Also, he brought a couple of prisms along with him because every child is a playful kid and they would like to, you know, play a lot demonstrate experience through their own working and experiments. Now, this boy, when he came home, he had no library. He had no professors to guide him. And of course, there was no Google at that point of time. So he started calculating with calculating the mathematical problems with whatever knowledge he had acquired till then. Meantime, whenever morning sun rays were uh, coming in his room, that was too much of shaft that was coming inside. So what he did, he closed the doors, he bore a very fine hole in the door so that only a fine ray of sun can enter in his room. And he started, you know, playing around with the prisms with that uh, sun ray. Whenever we, he had time, he used to come out in the orchard that was just outside his house and one day when he was sitting on a, uh, under the apple tree, an apple fell on him. Now you know who the person or the boy was. Yes, it was Newton. After one and a half years of what we call today lockdown, he went back to Indian College. Whatever mathematical calculations he had done, those proved to be the foundation of what we call today calculus. Whatever experiments he did like a fun with the prisms turned out to be the theories of optics. And of course, you know, the falling of apple led to the laws of gravitation. But his assistant associate had written once upon a time that it was not that he was thinking that it was uh, the apple which had fallen on him was because of gravity or the gravitational pull, no. He wasn't thinking about that. He was thinking beyond it. He was thinking whether there is a possibility of having such a gravitational pull between earth and moon. Now, situation was same, which is today. No communication, no uh, library facility, no teachers uh, physically present. At the same time, it was his curiosity. It was his... Uh, cleverness, what you call it, and creativity. That had led to all this. And within six months, he was made a fellow of Trinity College. So before becoming Sir Newton, Sir Isaac Newton, he was just a Newton. And when a Newton of 20 years of age can do this, I believe that any child can do because today we have access of knowledge. We have access to the knowledge, we have access to technology, we have so many things around us 
and that has made us more creative and that has made us more curious so you have to put on your put on your thinking cap start working towards your idea turning into an invention than innovation but at the same time please remember if it is worth patenting go for it first before you publicly demonstrate your experiment or your uh, uh, work in public please go for the provisional application of your patent because if you do not do it someone else who is closely looking at your work would take advantage of your work and would be no other than an entrepreneur so if you have done something worth uh, so social benefits worth living sustainably sustainably then it's my humble uh, request to all of you all the children who are participating please look into the inventive steps please look into the innovative steps in your project and let's have the maximum number of patents from ksa this is uh, what we wish from india to all the children in kingdom of saudi arabia thank you very much thank you very much sir indeed a profound thanks from from all of us here in saudi arabia for those wonderful words and that excellent message that you put across into the minds of our children of course they are the future and they need to be addressed and thanks for giving out that great message that this lockdown is just temporary and it's not to be cowed down people are not to be cowed down but rather make use of it as an opportunity to break free innovate and invent new things thank you sir thank you once again but for further ado let us now invite our next scientific speaker and an eminent uh, dignitary who is present with us today shri tp ragunath ji shri tp ragunath ji has been associated with the national children science congress since its inception in 1993 as the state coordinator and the state academic coordinator for puducherry union territory he has helped organize regional orientation workshops for the national children science congress for the southern states and from 2014 has been member of the national academic committee he had held the chairmanship of the national academic committee for three terms in 2014 2015 2016 2017 and 2018 2019 which continued up to july 2020 currently he is a member of the national academic committee and also serves as an expert committee member of the national expert advisory committee of child centric projects under the nctc department of science and technology government of india based in puducherry and having an experience of over 30 years in science and technology communication he has also coordinated the international faith de la science program of the university of paris orsay france since 2007 to 2017 in puducherry and also has visited france in connection with the same event his other areas of expertise include participatory irrigation management education soil fertility management agro ecological farming etc it's indeed a pleasure to have shri ragunath ji with us to address the gathering sir the stage is yours you may please unmute and speak uh, am i audible yes sir okay good evening all children all dignitaries who are here dr lalit sharma ji and all my friends uh, whether in india or anywhere i think we all are still human beings i think uh, pandemic reminds us that uh, whoever whatever position you have you know we are all ultimately human beings at the mercy of nature and i think that the focal theme for uh, this year and next year science for sustainable living reminds us this uh, particular though of course at nac when we decided this focal theme there was no Uh, not even a hint of uh, pandemic or other issues but i think this reminds us that uh, uh, we unless we uh, innovate uh, we cease to exist so earlier it used to be the survival of the fittest but i think science has made us capable of being making everybody at least fit enough to survive uh, such uh, extreme events pandemics uh, i think thanks to science and also 
uh, I think thanks to the entire uh, humanity, which is now struggling hard to take us out of this, especially this bad situation that we are currently in. So welcome you all. Uh, I will not talk much about uh, thing because I think uh, my earlier speakers, especially Dr. Lali Sharma ji has beautifully put down the uh, theme very well. My only uh, request to all the children, all the guy teachers, parents, uh, it would be that um, allow your children to think out of the box. Uh, I think when we talk about inventions, innovations, I think it starts from thinking, critical thinking. So NCSC is based on that particular thing, uh, focused on critical thinking, uh, rather than the end result. Of course, you may end up doing a lot of new uh, path-breaking work, but I think the process of doing science is more important as far as we see at NAC, we see that the process of doing science, the what we call as the method of science. Of course, there are people who had said like, Lakatos, Fairbank, who said there are no methods in science, but of course, scientists do follow a certain set of methods. It could be one method, one type of uh, thing. So we also talk about in NCSE also, we insist on the methodology part of any project that we do. Of course, what you do and what you arrive at is uh, very important, but it's also equally important that how you have arrived at those uh, situations. So when lateral thinking, out of the box thinking is has to be the thing. And also we should remember that we need to be compassionate. I think uh, science also teaches us to be secular, to be compassionate, to look at all living forms, not only human beings, because it's the part of almost 99% of all problems that currently plague. You know, this is even a larger plague than the actual plague which happened maybe three, four centuries back. Uh, current issues are all anthropogenic or all human created. So the biodiversity is getting affected. Our natural resources are getting depleted in a very fast way. And partly the, our generation is responsible for that. I think we should actually say sorry to the new generation, but the new children, but not only us, I mean, because science uh, was not advanced those days, but we have a traditional knowledge system which had actually protected our natural resources. So you will see that these sub themes which we have put into the focal theme is not just for a fun. Okay, that is for a reason. So maybe it's good to think about those sub themes, even though you may not be doing one partic your particular project on a particular sub theme. Maybe if you can link up whatever work you do, whether it is Children's Science Congress or other things, no, you will continue. Children's Science Congress is only an entry point of making you think critically, look around you, uh, look at other life forms, other uh, you know, birds, flowers, insects, even the invisible bacteria, viruses. There are a lot of beneficial viruses. Okay, virus is not, uh, if these things, uh, organisms were not there, we wouldn't have evolved also. Like I think now modern science talks about the gut bacteria, which actually you know, makes you think, which actually, I think maybe our brain is not in the head that is that maybe it is the gut bacteria which uh, controls our eating habits so a lot of issues uh, we can solve if we are if we keep our eyes open if we keep uh, working with our fellow beings fellow life forms and i think uh, this is an opportunity which is thrown open that you will not get limited to your own curriculum or school timings. You have the entire time with you. There is no limit uh, to which you can go. Sky is not the limit. So, uh, because your thought processes can cut across any geographical region, any limitations that is there and technology also enables us to do that. So I will finish this. My best wishes to uh, our friends, our children who are out there. Uh, I'm very happy to note that a lot of children are doing very good projects. I hope that this process will continue. And from National Academy Committee side, we extend our wholehearted support to all of you. We don't differentiate children, whether they are Indian or you know, Gulf children or tribals or village or rural. Or, that is the beauty of CSC. You know? It's an inclusive program. We allow children to present in their mother tongue. Uh, so we, we see a lot of good things happening all these years and uh, I'm sure this will happen in the future also. So thank you for this opportunity. Uh, 
uh, once again, uh, I'm very happy to be associated with this program and we will be available in future as well. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Sri Raghunath Ji, for those wonderful words. Indeed, you sent in the message to all our children to think big, think out of the box, and think beyond the limits. Thank you once again, sir. Next, let me call upon our GCC Coordinator for Science India Forum, Sri Abga Ravindranath Babu, to address the gathering. Sri Abga Ravindranath Babu is also the organizing secretary for Science India Forum in the Gulf Cooperation Council region. And he has, to his credit, the organizing prowess of India International Science Festival and the World Ayurveda Congress in the GCC region. He's the chief coordinator for international Ayush, Ayush conferences and exhibition as representative of the government of India. He's also the general secretary of the Arab region yoga instructions conference and General Secretary of the Arab Region Yoga Instructions Council. It's indeed a pleasure to have Sri Abgar Ravindranath with us here today. Sir, the stage is yours. Sir, you can unmute. Can you please unmute? Uh, we are unable to hear you, sir. One minute. Oh, namaste. We can hear you, sir. Okay, okay. So, uh, respected DZM, Embassy of India, uh, Dr. Lalit Sharmaji, Sri Reguji, Sri Biju Malashari Ji, and Dr. K. S. Ji, principals, teachers, students, SA volunteers, and the member of judging panels. So, today is a very significant day for SAF as we could achieve two milestones. As you all are aware, the India International Festival, organizing by the Ministry of Science and Technology, Ministry of Earth Science, and Ministry of Health Government of India, and Viva, is happening. And today, it is a voluntary session just finished. And as a part of that program, today, we got a Guinness record for the most viewers for the nutrition session in live stream. SAF KSA coordinated the activity here, and the students from the kingdom could able to attend the session and become the part of the Guinness World Record program. Congratulations to the Science India Forum team and the students who participated for the program. And next is today's present program. This is the first ever state, uh, state level Children's Science Congress happening in the GCC countries, as mentioned by Narayan sir. And I would like to express uh, my sincere appreciation to Dr. Narayanji, Vijayji, and the team for providing a platform for the students from the kingdom in this pandemic situation. I know how much pain and effort you have taken to achieve this. Also, I would like to mention and thank for the support we, uh, we are, that we are getting from NCSTC by Sri Sujitji, Dr. Lelitji, Reguji, and the team. Before concluding, I wish to congratulate all the students who participated in this program and the school authorities for conducting this program and permitting us to conduct the program. Hope we will be able to conduct a fully fledged physical children's science congress event in the next year thank you merry christmas to you all and happy new year jai hind namaste thank you abgaji thanks for addressing the gathering gratitude is what that makes everything enough. Next, let me call upon the Science India Forum, Damam Chapter President and Secretary, Sri Sanalji, to deliver the vote of thanks. Sanalji. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sundar. Very good afternoon, everyone. Uh, His Excellency, Dr. Asaf Syed, Ambassador of India, uh, respected and Ram Prasad, Deputy Chief of Mission, respected Dr. Ladit Sharma, Chairman National Academy Committee, National Children's Science Congress, Government of India, respected T.P. Raghunathji, ex-chairman and National Academy Committee, National Children's Science Congress, Government of India, respected school principal, science coordinator, students, my SIF colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. It's my privilege to you know, have been asked to propose the word of thanks on this occasion. Uh, this is Sanal Kumar from Science India Forum, the Mom chapter. 
First and foremost, I would like to express our deep sense of gratitude to Dr. Ausaf Syed for his encouraging message to Science India Forum and participating students. Thank you very much, sir. We, we are indeed honored by your great words. My sincere gratitude goes to N. Ram Prasad, sir, Deputy Chief of Mission, who have graced this occasion with his presence. Thank you very much, sir. Appreciate your valuable time and interest. My wholehearted gratitude goes to Dr. Lalit Sharma ji, Chair, Chairman, National Academy Committee, National Children's Science Congress, Government of India. We are indeed happy and delighted by your presence. Thank you very much, sir. Appreciate your valuable time and support on this occasion. I would like to thank Mr. T.P. Raghunath, ex-chairman, National Academy Committee, National Children's Science Congress, Government of India. We are very happy and delighted to have you here today, sir. Thank you very much. I appreciate your valuable time and support on this occasion. An event like this cannot happen overnight. The wheels started rolling months ago. It requires planning and a bird's eye for details. We have been fortunate enough to be guided by Dr. Casey Narayan, backed by a team of very motivated and dedicated team of SIF uh, for sincerely conducting the second NCSE with precision and dedication. Thank you, Dr. Casey Narayan, sir, and SIF NCSE team for your wholehearted efforts. A special word of thanks to all the principals, science coordinators, young minds from various Indian schools and parents for having taken their time out to be with us today. This was a delightful function, blessed with a lot of distinguished guests and academicians. Before I conclude, let me congratulate all the finalists and wish them good luck for the finals. Thank you one and all, have a pleasant evening. Thank you very much. Over to you, Dr. Sundar. Thank you, Sanalji, for those words of gratitude. Indeed, we have heartfelt thanks to all members, dignitaries, and eminent personalities present here. With this, we come to an end of today's inaugural program. I once again thank our chief guest and the dignitaries present with us today from far and wide. And I wish you all a happy Christmas, a happy new year, and season's greetings for everyone. With this, I sign off. The oral presentations will be starting through another link after a short break.